Hi, welcome back from You Should Have Completed By Now Lesson 1. And in this lesson, I want to, this is a brief lesson, where I want to just give you some tips and tricks for just some basic data analysis. And uh, it's an important subject and not one that's hard to, to learn, but it, it's an important one nonetheless because it allows you to kind of get in and do a little analysis on the data that's in the tables within a database so you can kind of get a better understanding of, of what the data of what the tables being used for how it's being utilized how the data is getting populated within the database and there's just a lot of good forensics that you can gain from doing that uh, and the reality too is unless you're the person that created the database a lot of times being able to go in and look at the data in the database can give you a lot of insights into into the tables and how they're being used and all of that so and this is going to build basically on some of the things you've learned in the first lesson so what I'm going to do is we're going to open up the the healthcare database now and we'll right mouse click on patient and we'll select the first thousand rows now I can uh, now I can come over here and I can look at the scheme itself, and that'll give me kind of some indication and understanding of the data that's being stored in this particular table. But I can still glean more about the table by actually looking at some of the data. And let me give you a, a, an example of that. Uh, if I look at the date of birth column, I can see that it's a date time stamp. So my expectation is is that I'm going to see the date and the time in there. Now, as I as I come in and I I look at the data itself, what I see is I'm seeing a date, but the time portion of the date time stamp is all zeros. And as I look through, I'm seeing that that seems to be a a, a common theme. So by looking at the data I can get a little bit more information about what's kind of going on within within the database itself one other thing too and I want you to get in the habit of doing this is this tool inherently is going to bring back the first thousand rows but if you're running this at the command line or some other thing it's always good to go in and explicitly set the limit statement as well and so that's something you just should get in the habit of doing uh, if I look at the marital status field, I can see that, well, this is a null field. This tool doesn't tell me that when I'm looking over here at the schema. All it's given me back is the column name and, and the uh, date time. So as I look at the marital status field, I see it's a, it's a field that can contain up to three characters. But I don't get any information that this field can be nullable. And as I look at the data set, I can see that most of the data is null. In other words, whoever's entering the data, the end user that's entering the data, isn't putting a value in that field, and so it's being written to the database. It's not being written to the database. It's null. Null meaning it doesn't exist. And, and so a lot of times doing data analysis to discover data deficiencies within tables within a database is is an important task that you that you may be asked or required to do as part of your job. The next thing I want to show you is in the grid and the first table we worked with in, in lesson one didn't have more than a thousand rows in it so we didn't see this but you see there's little icons up here. I can scroll through and I can get the next thousand rows and the next thousand rows and I can kind of move back and forth analyzing the data in that capacity. But suppose I want to find out, okay, I know there's there appears to be well more than a thousand rows in, in this table, but how many rows actually are there in this table? One of the things that I can do is I can count the rows that are in a table and get an idea of that. And so I can do that by using a count function. So by after the select, I 
type in, I create the count function and within there the asterisk and this will return back for me one row of data that tells me how many rows are in the database or in the, I should say, in the patient table. And as you can see there's 13,041 rows of data in that in that table. Now going back to what I discussed in lesson one, I, I need to talk about this again, is it's important that you understand where you're working and what you're doing when you're when you're working with with data and I'm going to presume that you know this is your this is potentially something you're going to be doing at work or in an occupation where there's a production system somewhere where there could be a high volume of data so for example the way this is written select count star from patient limit a thousand if I apply that statement and you can see it's only returning one row. What this statement is doing is it's going through that table and it's reading every row in, of data in the table to produce a count. Now that's what it's doing in MySQL. In some SQL servers it's reading what's uh, known as a statistics table to get that that information. Uh, not the case here. This is actually counting all the rows. So if, if we're in a production system and there's two million rows of data in this table, well it's gonna it's gonna go through two million rows to produce the count. So again, kind of understanding where you're at, what you're doing is important. If you're not sure, pick up the phone, sneak or net down, talk to your friendly neighborhood DBA, get that type of information from them. It just it, it's it's better to ask. Better be safe than sorry. I guess is the is the adage. All right. I'll just get rid of that and go back to the point we were at. And let's and again we can do this. We can pick any table within whatever database we have access to. And we can go in and we can do again data analysis. Being able to look at the data can give us a lot of information regarding the table how it's used, how it's used within the database, that type of thing. Uh, one of the key thing I want to cover with you, which can come in handy, uh, as we as we look at the data for this table, the hospitalization table, you can see we got this nursing unit. Well, this represents the location where the patient is within the hospital, and you can see the different nursing units: one east, QA, whatever that might be. It's obviously a test database we're getting the data from, one west, what have you. Now, let's suppose I wanted to get a list of this data. In other words, I want to get a list. My question is, is how would I get a list of what all the nursing units are within, within here? Well, that's actually a pretty easy thing to do. I can add a keyword to my select statement called select distinct and I can spell it right and that would be helpful maybe third times the charm no it's gonna be fourth time the charm here okay there we go I notice the color coding if you haven't by now keywords show up in blue kinda of like Pavlov's dogs you, you get an idea if you made typos and, and, and things of that nature so if I want to get a list of a non-repeating list of all of the items within the nursing unit column, I can say select distinct nursing unit. And now if I run that, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list back of all the nursing units within here. Uh, and again, I can put them in alphabetical descending or ascending order by clicking on the column itself. Now if I want to get a quick count of how many there were, if I go here and I click on the output, this is going to come up and see down here it, it's echoed my query and there's 23 rows. So there's 23 different nursing units. Now that's, since we're looking at the data in the table, the nursing unit may be defined by some other table typically it's going to be in the case of this this data it's not but 
at least we would know as far as hospitalization the hospitalization table there's 23 distinct nursing units that are being utilized that for for patients and that's a that's an important piece of information for us to understand as we're kind of looking at the data and, and mining the data a little bit. Also while we're in this area, as the output gets filled up, if you want to clear it out, you just go somewhere within, just right click anywhere within here and click clear and that'll remove everything. And I'm going to go back to where we were at here. Now in the query, since we're just mucking around, uh, you can use Control Z and it'll kind of take you back. Uh, to be honest, I don't know really how big the buffer is. <laughs> it's not real big. So may have to do this yet one more time. And if I want to dismiss a, uh, a query window, I can use this. I can type into it. You just click the, the X up above and that goes away. And again, as I'm, I'm, I'm back in here, I can look at certain columns and certain kind of key columns like the arrival mode and things like that. Again, I can do a select distinct and I can find, well, how many different types of arrival modes are there? Seem to have a real problem with the word distinct. And again, I can get a list of all the, the different types of arrival modes. Now, what this actual, what these mnemonics mean, if I don't work in healthcare, and even if I don't work in this particular area of healthcare, admission, discharge, transfer, I'm, I'm probably not going to, I'm probably not going to know that uh, PV is, stands for private vehicle, AM stands for ambulance, and at some other healthcare vendor, it may be a and B again, but I, I can start to look at mine the data, take a look at it, and get a better understanding of of what the data looks like. So to do a quick recap, uh, I've shown you the select distinct and how that can be useful in defining data where it may be pulled from a list or something like that where there's a finite number of of entries within the database. Um, I can, I've shown you the select count where I can go in and, and get an exact count of how many rows are in each of the table. And, and we put to use the select limit to a thousand to get back so we can do some just some basic analysis of the data within the database. So I don't have an exercise, a formal exercise for you on this one. You should have followed along if it's important that you know how to do those three those three functions. You're able to do a select count that you know how to get the first thousand rows which you already learned how to do in the first one and that finally you understand the select distinct what that does and how to return back data using select distinct. This concludes this lesson and you're ready to move on to the next lesson. See you then. Bye.